Newness Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings. I hope and trust I find you well. I am Eldam Gandler from Solusi University in Zimbabwe, and it is a privilege to come out and talk to the students of Rhode University in South Africa on the topic, Faith in Trying Times. Without much ado, I invite you into the book of Daniel. We are at chapter 3 and we begin reading at verse number 16. This is a story you know so well. It reads as follows. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning furnace and he will deliver us out of your hand. But if not, be it known unto you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his appearance was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spoke and commanded that they should heat the furnace seven times more than it is usually heated. Skip to verse 21. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, and their turbans, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fairy furnace. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we spend a moment in prayer. Kind of gracious Father, in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of calling upon your name as we gather early in the morning to hear from you. How we pray, dear Lord, you may prepare our hearts, revive our faith, especially for times such as these. Be with the listeners that are before me, the student body at the University of Rhodes, and those who are connecting from all over the world. How we pray, dear Father, that you may meet each and every one of us in our spaces. And as for our student body, may you make them equivalent or even exceed the tasks that are before them. Some of them have assignments that are due, reports that are outstanding, and even maybe exams that are around the corner. May you give them the blessing of the intelligence of Daniel, the intelligence of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Give them the wisdom of Moses of old and Joshua. This has been our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask, Amen. My dear friends, I usually make it a custom to raise five points every time I present. I'll not make an exception here. I wish to raise five points on this topic or title, Faith in Trying Times. Faith in Trying Times. Our faith cannot be a sure faith unless it is tried, unless it is tested, unless it is proven. There is a need for our faith to be proven. As Christ is about to leave, he asks the question, when the Son of Man comes, will he find any faith in the world? This must have been a research question that Christ was putting out. I'm taking you back into your research class. As he puts this research question across, Will the Son of Man find any faith? It's as if God is already putting a null hypothesis and he says, there is no faith in the world. Let us go on and test this thesis to find out whether it is true or not. So the T-twists and the the T-tests and the chi-squares are going to come in there as we try to figure out whether there is faith or not. But that aside, come back to the word of God. Let's leave research on the side for now. Point number one, notice that our faith is going to be tested by political systems. You you are already aware that the story of uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego does not begin in chapter three. It does not begin on the plains of Dura. It begins in chapter one, where Nebuchadnezzar sent out a command that the boys who were born into the nobility of Israel who could be taught the language of the land, be taught the art and the skill of the land were to be gathered in. These are the four Hebrew boys who distinguish themselves in chapter one, and they say, we shall not eat food that is offered unto idols, food that is unclean. 
give us vegetables and clean water. Thereafter, fruits and vegetables, that's all we need. And in 10 days, come and inspect us. When they were inspected after 10 days, it was established that they were 10 times healthier than all the other colleagues in their class. After the duration of their study, it could have been three years or four years, they were now called in for their final examination or a pass-out parade. It is said that when the king Nebuchadnezzar interviewed the boys for every element, every discipline, every question that he put to them, they turned out to be 10 times wiser than their colleagues. Their faith saw them through a classroom setting. May I talk to somebody who's in a classroom setting already and say, you need faith in times like these. You may have one of those lecturers who's not so easy to get along. There is maybe that particular colleague who rubs it in your face all the time. With faith, all things are possible. Having passed the first hurdle, in chapter 2, we find the king, now he has employed these, these boys. They are now under his employ. He has a dream that he forgets. Some people are so forgetful. They forget when they are alive. They forget when they are dead. They forget when they are sleeping. They forget when they are walking around. They are forgetfulness wherever they are. Forgive me my expression, my expression there. But the issue is the king has forgotten his dream. I hope you're not one of those forgetful people. You can have the luxury if you're a king to forget because you hire people to remind you. But if you forget when you are in a class, in a class setting, you know what will happen. You get a spanner. It's called an F. You may have to sit for a supplementary exam. If you are gifted with the gift of Nebuchadnezzar, forgetfulness, pray harder, my friend, and study even harder. Do not just pray and not study. Visit the library, you'll remember more things. Read more often, you'll remember them. But as for Nebuchadnezzar, because he's already a king, he can afford to forget. He calls upon all the astrologers, the magicians, and all the people that were considered wise in his kingdom to give him the interpretation of the dream. Notice that it is the four boys who find themselves at the verge of death without being given an opportunity to answer for themselves. Such scenarios are going to arise where others shall be given the opportunity to answer and you shall be held liable for their failure to respond appropriately. When this man now comes before Daniel, Daniel says, could we be given an opportunity with my friends to seek counsel with the Lord? In a couple of days, we shall get back to the king, tell him the dream and the interpretation thereof. They went off to pray. And the Lord reminded them, in fact, in fact, revealed what the dream was that the king had dreamt in his chambers. Now they went off to tell the king and remind him what the dream was. He had not asked for the interpretation of the dream, but Daniel went a step further to give him the interpretation of the dream. You know what he dreamt. A statue, gold, silver, bronze, brass, iron, iron and clay. And a stone that was hewn without any hand, hitting this at the foot and on the toes. As it did so, it pulverized and the stone grew and filled up the earth. And he goes on to give the interpretation. Babylon represented by gold going all the way to the kingdoms that will never come together. These are the kingdoms that we live in, in our time. Now notice that it is by faith that they go through the training exercise. It is by faith that they go through chapter two in the interpretation of dreams. Now in chapter three, we are in the plain of Dura. It is no longer the four of them, but the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who find themselves having been ganged on by a political system. The Nebuchadnezzar has erected a statue of gold in the plain of Dura. Now he says unto them, you shall bow down and worship this particular statue. They appear in this place, number one, as citizens of Babylon in spite, in spite of being slaves. They also appear at this plain of Dura as governors. That means they are civil servants on the government's payroll. Now, as they are on the government's payroll, they find that the system has turned against them for the third time. 
This time they are called upon to worship an idol and failure to do so shall result in instant death by being banned in the fairy furnace. Now, what am I saying unto you, my dear friends? A time shall come when you will find yourself ganged upon by a political system. A system that is above you. A system that employs you, which shall test your faith so that it can be proven. Are you going to stand like the four Hebrew boys? Are you going to say, Lord, my faith looks up to thee and dare to be a Daniel and never to turn back? That is the million dollar question. In times like these, in times like these, they are trying times because some of us are here to go into the workspace and some of us are already there. Our faith is being tested by systems. Systems that are above us. Systems that can take away our lives. Systems that can expel us from university. These are the systems that are above us. And when they are at work, they can crush your career. They can crush your life. They can turn you into a nobody in the click of a finger. You can become the former. Such systems exist and they are there to prove and test our faith. Point number two, after that long background, you are in a class setting. Now look at this. The issue, the nexus, the, the, the bond of contention is that Nebuchadnezzar has said, I have erected a statue of gold. You shall worship this statue of gold. Now the three Hebrew boys are in defiance, physically defying to bow down, and then even verbally defying to concede to the directive of the king. They say, we will not worship your golden image or King Nebuchadnezzar. Let it be known. If we are not going to be tested by the political systems, if our faith is not going to be tested by our employers, it is going to be a direct thrust into the issue of worship. Whom do you worship? Whom shall you worship? And if you do not worship the God of Israel, you will definitely worship the idols. As they are tested in this respect, may I say unto you, young man, young lady, have you gotten to a point where your faith is being tested on whom to worship, on which day to worship, and how to worship? If you are there, case in point, Go back to the book of Daniel. We are at chapter 3. It is instructive. It is a case study for those who find their faith under a constant test. Move on to chapter, I mean, I'm into point number 3. Now listen to what these gentlemen are saying. I, I need to read this one again. Listen to verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer in this matter. We have no further submissions. If it be so, now I'm at verse 17. Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand. I love the faith of these young men. They have faith. Faith in a God who delivers. We all love this God. We all worship this God. God the deliverer. God who walks through the flames with us. God who see to it that we do not drown. If it means providing a whale or, sh or whatever um, ship like Jonah, he will make sure we do not drown. We serve God the deliverer. Our faith looks up to this God. We all love this God. We all fellowship and rally behind this God. God the deliverer. A faith that talks of a God who delivers and subsequently comes through on our expectations is a faith that we all claim. How about point number four? Listen to verse number 18. I want to read this one nice and slow. But... If not, this is the God who does not do what is expected. 
This is the God who does not deliver us according to our expectations. What is our stance when our faith does not result in a positive outcome? There are those of us who have prayed and A's have come through. We have no problem ascribing that to God. There are those of us who have prayed and fasted and F's have come through. We have had to find ourselves being told, sorry, we cannot admit you. Your funds have not come through. The God who does not pay our fees when we need them paid. What do we have to say about a God who will not deliver? About a God who will not answer our prayers? About a God who will see us thrown into the fire? What do we have to say about that God? What is our stance? What is our faith position when God does not answer our prayers? Those who do not pray, they are on the dean's list. Those who do not even uh, budget, they find that there's a constant supply of money coming from home. They have it all. But we are the pillars of faith. We call upon the Lord and things do not seem to be going according to plan. What does verse number 18 say? But if not... Be it known unto you, O king, that we will not serve your gods. I'm calling upon young women and young men who are not going to seek an alternative God because the God of Israel has not blessed them according to their expectations. I'm calling on young men and young women who are not going to worship golden images and idols, especially the golden coin, money, mammon. I'm talking to those young people who say, Lord, I give my life to you. They may set up structures that will force us to worship, but even if you do not do so, if you do not answer my prayer, let it be known that you are my God and I am your child. This will never change and I challenge you as I challenge myself. God is the God of yesterday. He's the God of today. He's the God of tomorrow. He will never change in spite of the change in my circumstances and in your circumstances. He is the God to be loved. He is the God to be worshipped. Come with me to point number five as we climax. I love the way point number 19, I mean verse number 19, puts it. Listen to verse number 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury If your faith is is not going to get other people angry, it has not been tested enough. Your commitment would make others be angry with you, call you stupid, call you names, call you foolish, call you a church mouse, church addict, whatever they will call you. It will make them furious because you have what? Chosen to love the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury. Not only was he full of fury, listen to the next phrase. It says, and the form of his appearance was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know that he went on to heat up the flames seven times. I'll not go there. This one you know. There is something I want you to notice. When he is so angry and he, his face, <laughs> his countenance has changed. I'm sure you watch those cartoons where there's smoke that comes out of your ears, out of your nostrils, and, 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 and your teeth. I'm not sure what Nebuchadnezzar looked like, but his countenance had visibly changed. He was no more the loving employer. He was no more the loving king. Now he had turned into a beast. Your faith will turn some people into a beast. It will make you, there is a term that is known as persona non grata. What is a persona non grata? Persona non grata is someone who is unwelcome, someone who is undesirable. And undesirable is hated. How are they hated? For us to know that you are a persona non grata, whatever you touch becomes filthy. Whatever you are becomes filthy. If you come into contact with anyone, whoever is associated with you becomes filthy as you are. Why do I say these people had become classified as persona non grata? Read with me verse number 21 again. Listen to this. Then these men were bound 
How were they bound? In their coats. The issue is with the men who didn't bow. What is the issue with their coats? Because the coats are on them, they have become as defiant as they are. Not only their coats, their trousers, their turbans, what they were wearing around their heads, and their other garments, even the garments that could not be mentioned, they were not to survive. All that they had come into contact with had become spoiled. When you have faith, faith permeates and contaminates all that is about you. It is in your heart, but it will contaminate your tongue. It will contaminate your eyes. It will contaminate your taste. It will contaminate your appetite. That is what faith is. It cannot be confined into one space. It has to cover everything. It permeates. And those who have to do away with faith, guess what? That is why the martyrs are there. Their blood has to water the seed of the revival and the reformation. They have to be done away with. Why? Because these believe when we kill them, we are done. Nebuchadnezzar thought, if I throw them into the flame, I am done. Guess what? He got thereafter a roasted faith. This was sure and mature faith. For when they came out, the Bible says, Nebuchadnezzar said, there is no God like the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Everyone shall worship this God of Israel. Not in Israel, but in Babylon. Allow me to end with a story from a song that you know so well. A story is told. Some time ago in northeastern India, there was a Welsh reviver. An evangelist went out to preach the good news of the gospel, and he arrived by this tribe comprising of the native Indians. This tribe was a tribe of warriors, men of war, who were not afraid to take a life and to take it at the click of a finger. As he got there and shared the good news of the message, a family, husband and wife, and two sons, family togetherness, came to accept the Lord as Savior. But the local chief did not want to hear about this Jesus Christ. It soon came to his ears that a family had given their lives to Jesus Christ. These were called beyond before the assembly of the village, and it was put to them, you are alleged to have converted to Christianity. Is this true? The father of the house answered with dignity and respect to the king. He says, my Lord, it is as you have said. We have decided to follow Jesus. And the chief says, you know very well we have the gods of our forefathers. No one shall desert these gods. You can not have a change of faith. This has to end now. This has to end now. And the man says, we as a family have decided to follow Jesus. There is no turning back. And the chief was enraged. He ordered his warriors to shoot down his sons. Arrows were leashed, unleashed from the bows and the two sons were struck dead on the spot. He remained with his wife and himself. The man was resolute. As tears rolled down his cheeks, he was asked, Sir, are you ready to recant your faith and forsake this foreign Jesus? The man looked at his wife, and he says, Though none go with me, Still, I will follow. There is no turning back, Mr. Chief. The chief ordered that his wife be shot dead on the spot. And another bow was lifted, drawn out, and the arrow was let loose. She was struck through the heart and died on the spot. When the man remained standing all alone, family gone, he could 
answer as he was given the third and last chance. Are you going to turn back on your faith? This native Indian man says to the chief, Mr. Chief, the cross before me and the world behind me, there is no turning back. I, this time he could not say, we for his children were gone. His wife was dead, all scattered and bleeding around him. He says, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. He too was shot to death. As he died, the neighborhood, the chieftainship, the whole vicinity looked upon his death and they said, this God that somebody is willing to put their faith in, even to the point of death, when this God will do nothing, is a God to have, is the God to serve, is the God to worship, my brothers and sisters. In trying times, some of us are facing arrows of COVID, facing arrows of outstanding fees. We are drowning in debt. Even when we are dead, may our dead bodies minister to a faith in trying times, a faith in trying times, and may we not forsake this faith. Are you saying this morning, Lord, I have decided to follow you. I could be cast into flames. I could face arrows, but I'm not turning back. I'm not turning back. Forward ever, backward never. Is it your desire? Maybe you have not even decided for the Lord. You have not decided for the Lord. For those who are watching on Zoom, please do leave your contacts below and we shall be in touch with you. If you're watching this video that is posted simultaneously running on YouTube right now, please do post your details below. If you wish to reach me on my number, the number is plus 263-775-665545. Please reach out to me. Let us co-decide to follow Jesus and not turn back. I wish to pray for your decision as you are making this decision for the Lord. Are you ready to meet him? Are you ready to have faith in him? I want to pray with you as you make an oath over this holy book. And you're saying, Lord, my life I give unto you. Lord, I commit my life unto you. I want to pray for your decision. Let us spend a moment in prayer as we close. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, you call for faith as little as a mustard seed. Your children have decided for you without turning back. You who searches the hearts of men, you are taking note of these decisions. Some of them are hearing this voice and this message. It shall be the last. Hereafter shall be as someone that shall be preached when they are no more and dead. But they still have the privilege to choose you, O Lord. We have heard from thy word that it pays to follow thee. It also pains to follow thee. Whatever the odds, O oh Master, we have decided to follow you. You may walk with us through the flames and through the floods. You may not walk with us, but we want to rely on the psalmist promise and confession that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Dear Lord, we fear not those who throw us into the flames. We fear not those who shoot us and take our lives, for they can do nothing to our souls. What shall it profit a man or woman to keep his life and lose his soul? Rewarder of those who diligently seek you by faith, may you take note of our prayers. May you accept us into their kingdom. Cleanse us and clothe us like the prodigal son. This has been our prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Bless the students of Rhodes University. 
Bless the students of Solusi University. Bless the students of all universities and the children from multiple homes. This has been our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. May God bless you, my dear friends. Until we meet again next time.